It is now time for the Credentials Committee Report. The Chair recognizes Linda Cooper, Chair of our Credentials Committee, for a report. Linda, thank you. Good morning, Southern Baptist. The Credentials Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention is composed of nine members, seven elected to the committee and two ex, ex officio members. Under SBC Bylaw 8, the Credentials Committee is tasked with considering the relationship between a church and the Southern Baptist Convention. Our scope is limited to considering the question of whether a church is currently in friendly cooperation with the convention as described in SBC Constitution Article 3. Our assignment is to form an opinion as to whether a church has a faith and practice that closely identifies with the convention statement of faith. To form that opinion, our committee relies on previous actions of the convention, the Baptist faith and message, adopted resolutions, and the convention's governing documents. It is important for you to know that although we can inquire of a church, we may not investigate or use any process that would attempt to exercise authority over a church. To do so would be in direct violation of Article 4 of the SBC Constitution. We are a recommending body only. We have no decision-making power. That power lies with you, the messengers of the convention, or with the executive committee acting ad interim between annual meeting sessions. Only the convention or the executive committee has the authority to declare that it will no longer recognize a church as a cooperating church with the convention. Our committee typically meets one time each month, meeting anywhere from two to five hours. These meetings also require several hours of prep work before the meeting from each committee member who are all volunteers with other full-time and part-time jobs. Current Credentials Committee members include Jim Averett, a retired Vice President of Administrative Service Southern Nuclear Operating Company. He is a member of Dawson Memorial Baptist in Montgomery, Alabama. Brother George Russ, Executive Director, Metropolitan New York Baptist Association. Brother Greg Field, Senior Pastor, Nellis Baptist Church, Las Vegas, Nevada. Stacy Bramlett, Bank Senior Vice President, First Collierville, Tennessee. Serving as ex officio is Brother Roland Slade, Senior Pastor, Meridian Baptist, El Cajon, California. Brother Don Currents, SBC Registration Secretary, Administrative Pastor, First Baptist, Ozark, Missouri. And myself, Linda Cooper, and I am a registered dental hygienist, a member of Forest Park Baptist Church. If you have a tooth problem, come see me. I could use a piece of floss right now. <laughs> These men and women highly respect the magnitude of our work. I would like to thank each one of them for their hard work and dedication to the submitters, survivors, and all the SBC churches. For those of you who have been praying for us by name as we serve the Southern Baptist Convention, I say thank you. We greatly need and appreciate your prayers. During the 2021 SBC Annual Meeting in Nashville, Tennessee, a motion concerning the relationship of Saddleback Church, located in Anaheim, California, was referred to our committee for consideration. For your reference, our report and recommendation can be found on page three of the Tuesday Bulletin as follows. Based on the information available to us currently, including direct communication with Pastor Rick Warren, who was so gracious in answering our questions regarding faith and practice, we have concluded that we are not yet prepared to make a recommendation regarding Saddleback Church, recognizing that there are differing opinions regarding the intent of the Office of Pastor as stated in the Baptist Faith and Message 2000. Therefore, we are coming today asking for a study committee to provide clarity regarding this matter. We feel it is very important for you to know 
that it is the unanimous opinion of the Credentials Committee that the majority of Southern Baptists hold to the belief that the function of lead pastor, elder, bishop, overseer is limited to men as qualified by scripture and that this was the intended definition of office of pastor as stated in Article 6 of the Baptist Faith and Message 2000. However, the Credentials Committee has found little information evidencing the Convention's belief regarding the use of the title of pastor for staff positions with differing responsibilities and authority than that of lead pastor. For this reason, the Credentials Committee moves that the following recommendation be adopted. The Credentials Committee recommends that the Southern Baptist Convention during its June 14, 15, 2022 annual meeting in Anaheim, California form a study committee, the members of which shall be appointed by the President to report to the Southern Baptist Convention annual meeting June 13th and 14th, 2023 in New Orleans, Louisiana, a recommendation to provide clarity regarding the office of pastor as stated in the Baptist Faith and Message Article 6, the church. Given the many different offices within Baptist churches, which include pastor in the title, though often with very different responsibilities and authority. Mr. President, that concludes our report and our recommendation to this great convention. Thank you for that. That is a the question is the Credential Committee report on page three. Microphone 5A. Microphone 5A, you have a point of order. Would you state your name, the name of your church, your point of order, and help us understand what has been done wrong? Mr. President, my name is Bill Askell, pastor and messenger from the Bethel Baptist Church in Owasso, Oklahoma. And I'm going to put my earplugs in so I don't sound like I'm drunk, all right? Now, what I want to speak to is a point of order with reference to the resolutions committee, but a brother is behind me who wants to speak to a point of order, and I'm going to yield to him because I love him dearly and thank God for him. I introduce to you Dr. Al Moeller. Mr. Chairman, I just come to this microphone in the event that it is in order for me to speak. I'm speaking as a messenger of the Third Avenue Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. I served on the committee that brought the Baptist faith and message in 2000 that was overwhelmingly adopted by this convention. My concern is as a churchman, a theologian, and uh, someone who loves this convention as I know everyone in this room does. If we eventually have to form a study committee over every word in our confession of faith, then we're doomed and we're no longer a confessional people. Dr. Moeller, Dr. Moeller, with great love and respect, we would love to hear what you think on this. This is a point of order. What has been done out of order? I was not seeking to make a point of order, sir. Sorry. That was someone else. Okay. Would you stand by, please, just for a second with all due respect? I will stand by. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Microphone 3A, do you have a point of order? And would you please explain what is out of order? Your name, your church, and your point of order, please. Yes, sir. Shad Tibbs, pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church, Trout, Louisiana. I made the motion in Nashville last year. My point of order concerns the study of a pastor. The Baptist face the message states clearly right. that this office cannot be a lady. Brother, These we ladies, can, please excuse me for just a moment. We, you can speak to that issue at an appropriate time, but right now you have made a point of order. What is the disorder that needs to be corrected? that we are wanting to study the office of pastor. I think it's clear. Okay. 
I'm going to ask the parliamentarian to address what is a point of order. Thank you. We would happily remind the messengers that a point of order interrupts what's going on because it means that you have found a breach in the rules. There's a rule that's being violated and you're quickly, you're interrupting to call our attention to that because the chair has failed to notice a breach in the rules. Uh, it, it's not a way to get ahead in the line for debate. So please make sure before you punch that point of order light that you have your finger on a specific rule that has been violated the ch that the chair has failed to notice. So right now, uh, we've explored those. We have no points of order pending, but we do have some speakers who wish to speak against the recommendation. That's fine. In fact, uh, I would, uh, the parliamentarian rec uh, would advise the chair to uh, go back to uh, Dr. Moeller to speak against the recommendation, which you know. And I second what Barry said. <laughs> With the first and a second. So, Dr. Moeller, would you? He said five. Your, your microphone number five. I recognize you again to continue speaking to this. Thank you, sir. I certainly want to be in order yes, with sir. the rest of this convention. Yes. I appreciate the opportunity. I'll, I'll make this brief. I also appreciate the good work of the Credentials Committee and the spirit in which they bring this. But I am a confessionalist. This is a confessional denomination. We say what we believe in specific words that are the Baptist faith and message. The moment we start to, of necessity, have study committees to decide what the words mean, the words mean what Southern Baptists said in the year 2000. At that time, the word pastor was used by the committee and adopted by the convention because we were told that is the most easily understood word among Southern Baptists for pastoral teaching leadership. I have to hope we still have that much clarity and that churches that use the word pastor mean it. Mr. Chairman, thank you for this opportunity. Is there anyone who would speak for this recommendation? Someone from the committee. Yes. Dr. Moeller, I understand totally. I, to me, I know what pastor means, but. In some of our Southern Baptist churches, pastor is a spiritual gift that is given to many people. So we Please, have we wanted clarity excuse me, excuse me. in what that pastor means. With all due, ladies and gentlemen, with all due respect, that is not how we do our business. We cannot shout one another down. Dr. Moeller was not shouted down, thankfully. And nor should you be, and nor should the chairperson of this committee. Amen? Thank you. Microphone 6A to speak against. Yes, my name is Jack Maddox. I'm the pastor and messenger from the First Baptist Church of Jacksboro, Texas. I would like to speak against the recommendation for the study committee based upon this very simple premise. And it is this. Our convention has spoken clearly on this issue through the Baptist Faith and Message 2000. The messengers from my church are very clear on what this means. We do not need another committee, although well-intended, to speak to this issue for our church or for this convention. We have a book that has already spoken to it. Thank you.
Thank you, brother. Our time has expired on this, and if it's the consent of the body, would you allow us to extend this 10 more minutes for discussion? This is a time you can speak up, all right? Okay. Six, what, six, six B. Six B to speak for or against the motion? Six B. Six B. Microphone six B. Is that me? All right, uh, my name is Matt Saloria. I'm a messenger from Bethel Baptist Church in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and I wish to speak against the recommendation of the resolutions committee. In their resolution response, they state that Baptists hold the belief that the function of lead pastor, elder, bishop, or overseer is limited to men. Now, words matter, and this committee has inserted the word lead to the office and the title of pastor. The word lead is not found in Scripture, nor is it found in the Baptist faith and message. Baptists believe that there are two scriptural offices, pastor and deacon. This committee is suggesting that there can be three, lead pastor, pastor, and deacon. I'm speaking against this resolution's committee's uh, decision because I don't believe that we're being Baptists as people who are confessional and we believe that the Word of God has authority for us. All right. Microphone 5A, you have a point of order. State your name, your church, and the point of order. Help us to know what is out of order, please. Not yet. All right, I'm back. Uh, I, I would like to speak about a point of order concerning the resolutions committee report when that comes around. Now, I would just put an exclamation point on what brother, Dr. Moeller said. Oh, brother, right? there's no time for that. That's Okay. That, well, that's, I, I don't know why I keep getting called right. on. I want to speak to the resolutions committee when but, that time but comes. But you, you punched a point of order button. So what is With the point of order? With all due respect, brother, I didn't punch anything. I'm standing right over here. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. But up here, it says somebody punched the point of order. So. 2A, do you have an amendment? It's a question for the Credentials Committee. All right. If the Credentials Committee found that a pastor of a church seeking affiliation were in the habit of, from time to time, plagiarizing sermon content which is prohibited by all Sir, six please. seminaries. Sir, that is not the point of this. That is not the point of this discussion at this moment. Okay, does 3A, have an 3A, do you have an amendment? Yes. I'm Adam Greenway, messenger from the Travis Avenue Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. And I would like to move an amendment to the Credentials Committee recommendation. What I would like to do would be after Louisiana, to change the word A to any, to change recommendation to add a parenthesis as close parenthesis, providing clarity regarding the, strike the rest of the language, and instead insert the language of the Constitution of the Southern Baptist Convention, Article 3, Section 1, Subsection 1, has a faith and practice which closely identifies with the convention's adopted statement of faith, period. And if I get a second, I'd like to speak to this amendment. Is there a second? You have it, Dr. Greenway. And I offer this as a, what I hope will be a friendly amendment to the Credentials Committee. I've talked with uh, Chair Lady Cooper, who I have great respect for. Uh, it's clear to me from uh, the intent of this uh, committee's work that the issue that they face is one that is serious and one that we should give every resource to this committee to be able to do. But I don't think it is merely the issue of the question about whether a woman a pastor is in conformity with the guidelines of this convention because, and again, uh, we've heard uh, language even earlier talking about how we are a confessional convention. Well, 
Uh, that means a variety of different things, but it does not mean that any church must proactively affirm the Baptist Faith and Message 2000 in order to be a cooperating Southern Baptist church. Article 3 of the convention says that a church must have a faith and practice which closely identifies with the convention's adopted statement of faith. Before coming back to Texas, I spent 17 years in Kentucky, and there are Kentucky Baptist churches that affirm the First London Confession, the Second London Confession, the New Hampshire Confession, the Abstract of Principles, every iteration of the Baptist faith and message, some that have written their own confession, some that have no written confession. The guidance for the Credentials Committee needs to be more in terms of what is intended by how closely identified with the Convention Statement of Faith a church must be in order to be a cooperating Southern Baptist church. That is the issue at stake that the Credentials Committee needs, and I would move this amendment to give them the tools they need and to have a task force come back next year with how this convention should determine cooperation, not where we are trying to do authoritative interpretations of the Baptist faith and message in a way to where no Baptist magisterium exists by our polity. Would the committee like to respond to this friendly amendment? All right, we're going to get this on the screen so that everybody can see this at the same time, all right? Thank you for your patience. Dr. Greenway, would you please, uh, the page that was sent is blank. If you would uh, resend it or maybe come back and restate your motion for us. The microphone, okay. So my uh, amendment is the recommendation from the committee after Louisiana to uh, change the indefinite Article A to the word any to add a parenthesis S after recommendation, so it could be singular or plural, depending upon what the task force would determine. And then after the, uh, the definite article V before office of pastor, strike everything office of pastor to the end and insert language of the Constitution of the Southern Baptist Convention, Article 3, Section 1, Subsection 1, and then that sentence has a faith and practice which closely identifies with the convention's adopted statement of faith, period. All right, the, the editing device is not apparently functioning at this moment, and so you have heard the amendment by Dr. Adam Greenway, and you have heard the committee describe that they consider this a friendly amendment. It's time for us to vote on the amendment to the question. The question is, shall the Greenway Amendment be adopted? All right, if you have your ballots, would you please find those? Is there a point of order? Microphone 9A, is there a point of order? James, James Goforth, First Baptist Ferguson. My point of order is with the original question, so I will wait okay, until the you. amendment. Thank you. Is there another point of order? Is there anyone to speak against the amendment? Ask if there's 
anyone to speak against the amendment. All right. Is there anyone to speak against the amendment at this point? Hold on, please. 4A to speak against the amendment. All right. Microphone 4A to speak against the amendment. Yes, I'm Samuel Gillum from Woodlawn Baptist Church of Baton Rouge. Uh, I'm here to speak against. I want to echo a lot of what the previous gentleman said, um, but even more so, brothers and sisters, we have a book, and it says, but I do not permit a woman to teach or sec exercise authority over a man. I don't see how this is controversial, whether or not pastor can be a woman or a man. We've believed, like Dr. Moeller said, since 2000, that pastor means man in charge of a church, ha has some sort of authority, and I believe that's clear from scripture. And even more so, we made this motion about a specific church last year. If we wanna make a further motion to create a task force or, or some other committee to study this issue, let's make that a separate motion. But we're specifically uh, voting for or against whether or not we should disfellowship Saddleback Baptist Church. And I think the answer to that is yes, we should disfellowship Saddleback Baptist Church because they have a woman pastor and that is against the BFNM. It's against scripture and brothers and sisters. I think it's just kind of ridiculous that we're, we're, we're going on like this about whether or not a pastor is a woman. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right. Microphone 8A, your name, your church, and your point of order, please. Well, my point of order was just resolved because I wanted us to be able to debate the amendment that was on the floor. Does he wish to speak to it? Do you wish to speak to it? I wish to speak against it, and it's already been spoken against. So if the opportunity arises again, I would like to have it. And ask him to stand right there. Would you stand by there? Seven a. Yes, sir. 7A to speak for the amendment. Microphone 7A, would you speak for the amendment? I wasn't speaking for the amendment. I was speaking for the, uh, the motion Thank particular. You. Thank you. Uh, 6A to speak for. Microphone 6A, state your name, your church, and you're speaking for the amendment. Well, my name is Brian Gilmore, Southcliffe Baptist Church. I think anything that allows us to go to a further discussion on this is needed. And because we have people in here titled youth pastor, children's pastor, executive pastor, that are not the senior pastor, are not counted as elders. We are a congregational polity, so the idea of the amendment would allow us to have a deeper study on job titles, on who they are, because the church in question has two offices, elder, which is a biblical model, and then they have subset staff members, which they titled on that weekend as pastors. They're not a deciding factor in that congregation or administrative. Mm -hmm. So we as a congregational polity that have different offices need to look at the amendment that Dr. Greenway suggested for us to have a better organization in multi-staff churches. Okay, that'll be great. Yep. Microphone 8A to speak against the amendment. Please state your name, your church. My name's Tom Askell. I am the pastor of Grace Baptist Church in Cape Coral, Florida. I'd like to speak against the amendment. It seems like we're making things far more complex than they should be. We do have the Baptist faith and message. It is not equivocal in its language. It's very simple. It's very clear. If churches choose to call people pastors that are not biblically qualified to be pastors, that is a matter for the church to resolve. I think we have spoken rather clearly as a convention, and I think if we adopt this amendment, it will further complicate something that has no reason to be complicated. It's simple. Saddleback has ordained women to be pastors very loudly. They've celebrated it. The Southern Baptist Convention has said, we do not believe that women can serve in the office of pastor. So let's not do this amendment. Let's defeat it, and then let's defeat the original recommendation. <laughs> Microphone 2A to speak for the amendment. This is Todd Benkert, Messenger of Oak Creek Community Church in Mishawaka, Indiana. 
I'd like to support Dr. Greenway's amendment because we have a Baptist faith and message which many points are not agreed on by every Southern Baptist church. We need clarity on what does it mean to be in cooperation with Southern Baptists. In this room, we have many, many of our churches represented that do not follow the Baptist faith and message in regards to the Lord's Supper. That is a problem, and if we had come to the place where we were making a motion to disfellowship a church because of a different article than this one, we would be in a similar position, except that we would have to exclude 30 to 40 percent of the messengers in this room. We need clarity on what does it mean to be in partnership. We can have one study committee after another, after another, task force after another, after another, for every single article of this co convention, when one task force that, that um, excuse me, That's brain right. fog. <laughs> That's all right. That one task force that would study this particular issue of what does it mean to be a cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention, knowing that many, many churches in this room do not subscribe to the Baptist faith and message in its entirety. Thank you. Microphone 7A to speak against the amendment. This was to speak against the original motion. Thank you. Microphone 3A to speak against the amendment. Yes, sir. John Aaron Matthew, messenger of Clear Lake Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. I'd like to speak against this amendment because it continues uh, to confuse the issue that is clear in the Baptist faith in Message 2000 and in Scripture. And so I want to agree with Dr. Tom Askell and for Dr. Moeller. Uh, we have spoken clearly, the Bible speaks very clearly, and we need to speak clearly today to vote against this amendment and to vote against the, uh, the suggestion from this committee. Thank you. Our, our time for recommendation on this recommendation has expired. So we need to put the vote for this amendment up. So if it's on the screen. You see the amendment. Take a look at that and have your ballots ready. Those who are favorable for the amendment, would you raise your ballots now? And hold them up, please. Put those down. Thank you. Those. In opposition to the amendment, would you raise your ballots? Hold them up, please. All right, you may put them down, Stan. It's the chair's position that we need to order a ballot for this. So if you will have your ballots, I'm going to ask for Don Currens to come and give us instructions on this ballot. So find your ballots and be prepared to vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. At this time, we have registered 7,913 messengers. Please take out your ballots 
and ballot number one. Just make sure it's ballot number one. And please tear that out now. Because there's probably a lot of votes, please don't have ballot number two. Because we, we probably need every ballot. So tear out ballot number one. Notice again, it says by bylaw number 10, item F. In order to cast a ballot, a messenger must be present at the time the vote is taken. Voting by proxy is now allowed. Please get ready to vote for ballot number one and mark it in the following manner. To vote in favor of this amendment, place an X on the circle that says yes. To vote against this amendment, place an X on the circle mark no. Again, if you're in favor of this amendment, mark put an X on yes. If you're opposed to this amendment, put an X on no. Also, please do not fold your ballots. That doubles our time in the counting room. Okay. Please pass your ballots to the right. And be sure they're picked up by an usher of the teller committee. Okay. Ushers, please collect the ballots. Thank you. All right, while we are taking this vote, the the original recommendation is on hold until we get the results of this. And the business or the order of business committee has set 305 this afternoon for, for to look at this again, to get the results and to talk about this issue further. That's right. I'd say go ahead and say recognize Bart Harvey. It's just 